All right, in today's video, we're going to talk about equations and inequalities involving absolute value. So, for example, something like the absolute value of x is equal to 7. Right. So, one of the ways that you can think of absolute value is as distance on a number line from the origin at 0. Right. So, we can think of this as all the points x that are 7 units away from 0. Okay. Well, if you look at the number line, there's two ways to go. We could go to the right seven units, three, four, five, six, seven, to the number seven, or we could go to the left seven units, two, three, four, five, six, seven, so negative seven. So there's two points which are seven units away from the origin. There's seven and negative seven. So this would give us two solutions, x is equal to seven, or x is equal to negative seven. And that's generally the case when we're dealing with either equations or later on inequalities with absolute value, that we're going to get two different answers, one for the positive side and one for the negative side. Okay. So in general for equations, we can write this following formula, that if A is positive and U is any algebraic expression, and we had something like the absolute value of U is equal to A, and this is going to give us either that u is equal to a or u is equal to negative a. Just like we had on the previous screen. When we had the absolute value of x is equal to 7, either x was 7 or x was negative 7. Okay. So, um, in order to use this fact right here, this is the important part right here, um, there's two important facts that you have to be aware of. Let me put those in. Okay. Number one, the absolute value must be isolated. Okay. Notice there's no addition to the end of this absolute value. There's no multiplication in front. So we need to make sure that whatever absolute value we have, it's all by itself. Okay. The second thing, what it's set equal to, this A has to be positive. Now, if you think about setting an absolute value equal to a negative number, well, that's never going to work, right? The absolute value always spits out positive numbers, so this has to be a positive over here. Let's look at a couple examples. Um, number one, let's say x plus 2 is equal to 4. All right, <laughs> so if we look at this, number one, the absolute value is isolated. There's no addition on the end of this absolute value. There's some in the inside, but there's none on the outside of this absolute value. There's no multiplication out in front. Okay. So it is isolated, and this is a positive number. So that means that we can use this expression right up here. That either the stuff inside the absolute value, x plus 2, is equal to 4, or the stuff inside the absolute value, x plus 2, is equal to negative 4. Now, to solve these, all we have to do is subtract 2. Notice they're both similar to solve. And in the first case, we get x is equal to 2. In the second case, we get x is equal to negative 6. So again, we get two solutions, okay, both of which make this expression true. Okay. Well, let's look at a slightly more complicated example. Um, in that, you have to isolate first. So let's say that we have... Um, 2 times the absolute value of 3x minus 1 plus 4 is equal to 20. All right, now, absolute value has to be isolated. Very, very important. I can't get over how important this fact is, so I'm going to put some stars here. So the first thing that we need to do is make sure that absolute value is all by itself. So to do that, I'm just going to solve for it, basically. So I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides. So we get the 2 times the absolute value of 3x minus 1 is equal to 16. And then I'm going to divide by 2. This is going to give me the absolute value of 3x minus 1 is equal to 8. Okay. So again, the absolute value has to be all by itself. No additions on the end or multiplications out in front. Once we get that, and it's set equal to a positive number, then we either have 3x minus 1 is equal to 8, or 3x minus 1 is equal to negative 8. And again, both of these are very similar to solve. We just add 1 to both sides. So 3x is equal to 9. Over here, 3x is equal to negative 7. 
and divide by 3. So x is equal to 9 divided by 3 or 3, or x is equal to negative 7 thirds. So again, we get these two answers, one coming from the positive side, one coming from the negative side. All right, well, let's talk about what happens for an inequality. So let's say the absolute value of x is less than 3. Right? Now, if we think of this as a number line again, these are all the points which are less than 3 units away from the origin. If you think about it, it would be all these points are less than 3 units, and we can go all the way out to 1, 2, 3. We could go 3 units this way. Right? But we could also go back this way. These points are less than 3 units from the origin. But we can only go back so far, back to negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. Okay? So if we look at the points that are filled in here, the points that are 3 units away from the origin, they're all the values of x which are less than 3, but on the other end, greater than negative 3. So again, we get these two parts for our absolute value, for the positive side and for the negative side. So let's write this up. So we have the same format here, that if A is positive and U is any algebraic expression, and we had the absolute value of U is less than A, then this is going to mean that U is less than A and U is greater than negative A. A very similar is if the absolute value of u is less than or equal to a, it's almost identical. This expression remains almost identical. All we change is the less thans to less than or equal to's. Okay. So here we have it for absolute values less than. All right, so let's look at an example. Let's say that we have the absolute value of 2x plus 1 is less than 5. Well, if we look at it, our absolute value is isolated. That's very important that it has to be that way. And it's less than a positive number. That also stays important. Then we know that 2x plus 1 has to be less than 5, but it has to be greater than its negative counterpart, negative 5. Now to solve this, we're just going to subtract 1, isolate our x's, So we get 2x trapped between negative 6 and 4, and then we divide by 2. So we get that negative 3 is less than x is less than 2. So in interval notation, this would be negative 3 to 2, using open parentheses because we're not including the imports. Right. Let's look at one more example of less than for absolute values. So let's say... 1 minus 4x okay, uh, minus 5 is less than negative 1. Okay. Now you might see this and you go less than, it's less than a negative number, but the first part fact is more important that we need to isolate our absolute value. This thing has to be all by itself, so we have to add this 5 over to the other side to start. And once we do that, we end up with the absolute value of something is less than a positive number. So our previous fact can hold. Uh, we just take the stuff inside of our absolute value, 1 minus 4x, and we make sure that it's less than 4, but also that it's greater than negative 4. Okay. So to solve this, very similar, we are going to isolate our x's, so we subtract 1 from all the sides. We get negative 5 is less than negative 4x, so it's less than 3, and then we divide by a negative 4. So remember, when you're dealing with inequalities and you divide by a negative, all of your inequalities are going to flip directions. So this becomes negative 5 divided by negative 4 is 5 fourths. This inequality switches, so greater than x is greater than negative 3 fourths. Okay. Now, typically, we write the smaller number first, so we'd flip this whole thing around and we'd have negative 3 fourths is less than x is less than 5 fourths. Again, in interval notation, this would be negative 3 fourths to 5 fourths. 
All right. <coughs> so the last thing that we want to talk about is what happens for greater than. Okay. So let's just write this one up. If u is positive and u is any positive and u is any algebraic expression, and we have something like the absolute value of u is greater than a. And this is going to imply that either u is greater than a or u is less than negative a. And again, very similarly, if I switch this to greater than or equal to, the only thing that's going to change over here is rather than greater than, we're going to have greater than or equal to in both these cases. Okay. Now let's think about why this works again with a number line. If we have the absolute value of x greater than 3, and we look at a number line, so we want all the x's which are more than 3 units away from the origin. There's two sides to it. You could be over here, all these points, x is greater than 3, or you could go back to the left and go 3 units more this way. So x is less than negative 3. Okay. So again, let's look at a couple examples. Let's say that we have 3 minus the absolute value of x plus 1 less than oh, um, okay so you might look at this one and go well this one isn't a greater than we're supposed to be working on greater than problems but again let's go through this the first thing that we need to do is isolate so I need to subtract 3 from both sides So we get that the absolute value, negative of the absolute value is less than negative 2. And then again, I need to isolate this completely, so I need to divide by this negative 1. So we get the absolute value of x plus 1. And remember that when you divide by a negative, this is going to switch directions. So we get the absolute value of x plus 1 is greater than 2. So either x plus 1 is greater than 2, or x plus 1 is less than negative 2. So x is greater than 1, or x is less than negative 3. So here is our solution. Now you'll notice that all my examples I've had strictly greater than or strictly less than. That's because switching to greater than or less than or equal to isn't that big of a deal. If I wanted to switch this problem to less than or equal to, I could do it pretty easily. Putting less than or equal to in all these places. So again, it doesn't really change very much. Okay. All right. So in class, we're going to work a couple more examples. We're going to work through some of the homework problems um, and get a few more harder examples dealing with absolute values in either equations or, in, like in this example, inequalities. Okay. So make sure that you bring your notes to class, and we will over some more problems.